Thank you very much. Well, we've all been fed this morning, haven't we? That was a lot of singing, and we so appreciate those that have uh, taken of their time as volunteers for the children to have such a great week, and uh, we all had a little snack, didn't we? Please stand as you are able for the gospel reading. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist with the abundance of possessions. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let's join together in singing number 526, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. We will have a short sermon here today <laughs> for a couple reasons. One, we don't have much time left, and two, I forgot my glasses. So, yeah, we're just going to go flip, 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 and make it look good, right? I enjoyed sitting back here, and I enjoyed it for two reasons. I got to see the kids one more time. And I notice that not like in our gospel lesson, I didn't hear anybody say, Pastor, tell my brother or my sister to share the inheritance with me. I didn't hear that this morning. Thank you. The Psalms lesson has one of my favorite verses in it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so. 
As is my custom, I usually turn to our gospel lesson and I read, but I usually stop before I start and go back and say, this is what happened right before. And right before, it doesn't tell me what I really wanted to know what happened. What I really think happened is that this somebody in the scripture that came to Jesus and said, tell my sibling to share the inheritance, can you imagine what the conversation was between them and their sibling? That's what happened right before. There was no sharing of psalms, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And there was no sharing of love between siblings and family. In the context of the Old Testament, there is the law. God gave the law. The law is good. Praise be the Lord. The law said that the eldest firstborn, would receive a double portion of the inheritance. That's what the law says. Some people say that the law is blind, but God is not. When God gives the law, he gives it to us for his blessing, for a blessing upon us. The firstborn, the oldest, supposedly the wisest, the one that has grown up on Ma and Pa's lap, the one that has had the most opportunity to see what family is and how to take care of family. The oldest received a double portion of the inheritance, but the intent of the law is that the oldest receive a larger portion of responsibility. Responsibility. So now you can understand that the problem was not about money. The problem was this idea that things weren't being shared or that maybe somebody went wanted more than what was due. Jesus was very hesitant to address this issue. In fact, his response, and I like this, friends, can we talk a minute? Can we consider the implications of what all this means? The law was given by God to instruct the world about obedience and justice and right and wrong. But the law was also supposed to teach love, goodness, forgiveness, and to point the way to the coming Messiah, the coming Messiah. In seminary, they told us that we quite too often quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. This is the job of the coming Messiah. To save the world. Friend, I have been sent to save you and your older sibling. If you have a brother or sister here, look across the aisle and smile. Say, God bless you. Don't make void the kingdom of God or the word of God. We sang, what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus approached this person with the address of friend. John 3, 17. Anybody know that one? For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Jesus the world might be saved. 
And this man comes to Jesus and says, judge between me and my brother. And Jesus said, no. I'd rather save you both. I'd rather save you both. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Now, what a friend we have in Jesus. Do we have a judge in the world? Yes, we do. The judge in the world today is the accuser that's supposed to just be a prosecutor, but he seems to act like a judge. Now the question is, if Jesus is our friend, and if we can maintain that relationship with Jesus as a friend, we don't have a whole lot to worry about. But Jesus is our judge. When did he become our judge? Not when he was sent here to save us. Not when he died on the cross to redeem us from our sins. Not when he ascended into heaven. But when he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. Does anybody remember the Apostles' Creed? What are the words? From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Got it? When he sat down at the right hand of his father, he becomes our judge. Matthew 25. You all know that scripture. Whatsoever you have done to the least of these, you do unto me. And we ask, what? What are you talking about? I'm like, well, how did you greet your brother or sister last week? Did you look at your cell phone and say, oh yeah, I, I don't want to talk to them and just laid it on a shelf? Are you fighting amongst you about the gifts of God? Who gets to stand and speak first? Who gets the biggest plate in the dinner table? It's food truck. Everybody gets fed. God provides for everybody. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you realize how much God has prepared for you? Are you ready to be obedient and to understand and to give thanks? Jesus said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. In the abundance of possessions. It's getting warm up here, so I'm going to turn some pages. How's that? Matthew 7 says, judge not. You see, Jesus didn't come to judge, but we'll stand in for him. How many of you are ready to judge? I hope we don't have any judges or lawyers here today. You know, it's, it's a tricky thing because in the epistles of God's word, it tells us to be wise, to look, to see, to discern. But this judgment thing is a tricky thing. Judge not lest you be judged, for with the judgment that you pronounce upon others, you will be judged, and it will be measured. Measured. Your inheritance, twofold upon you, the judgment, the judgment. We're saying, what a friend we have in Jesus. I don't know, somebody's thinking in their mind, what a judge we have in Jesus. I remember watching TV years ago, laugh in, laugh in, you know, humor, funny, funny, ha, ha. As the character comes in with the big black robe and says, Here come the judge! Here come the judge! In the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you want to read that book, you're going to be blessed because it shows us Jesus Christ as a friend and as a judge. They say that the judge will be 
the church will be judged first because God has offered for us all the gifts. He who receives much, much will be required. Are you blessed? You know, gospel lesson says don't be greedy, but are you blessed? Are you living a good life? Are you enjoying your salvation? Are you glad to be saved? Are you glad to be saved? You know, that's kind of a personal question. You know, some people say, wait a minute, that's, that's too personal. We don't want to talk about sports or religion or politics, right? You know, and look what I'm doing. <laughs> Talking religion. I do have an older brother, and I remember the days we used to argue, and even in salvation we argue. I I asked him one day if he's saved. He goes, no. I'm like, what? He said, I am lost in God's wonder and grace. That's straight from one of the hymns out of the Methodist hymnal, by the way. And I thought, that's... That's okay. That's okay. And then I thought to myself, well, since your brother, my brother, I'll still pray for you, lost or found. I'll still pray for you. So the question is, what choices have we made and who is our neighbor? Who is our brother and sister? And really the question is, who are we? Are we still worldly? Are we still filled full of sin? Are we still following the God of this world? Or have we been changed? Have we been transformed? If somebody looks at us and you're not like the rest of the neighborhood, you're different. You're different. Our epistle lesson from Colossians chapter 3. So if you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above and not on the things of the earth. For you have died. How many of you are breathing? Yeah, this is symbolic. This is this is theoretical language. We have to understand uh, this concept of death. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Three days later, he arose from the dead. He ascended to the right hand of God the Father. When you were baptized, you died. When you went symbolically under the water, you died to sin and you became a Christian. You put all your faith, all your trust, you gave your life to Jesus Christ. And this scripture today says that you were dead, but now in Christ you are alive. There's still one problem. The wages of sin as death. And if you didn't wash away those sins, if sin is still affecting you in your life, there's one thing you have to do. Don't die again. You've died to sin. Put to death whatever is in you that is earthly. Those sins. Somebody looked through the Bible and said that there's over a hundred different sins in the Bible. And I'm like, I don't care. Jesus doesn't care how many sins are in the Bible. He cares how many sins are in you. Put them to death. Whether it's fornication, impurity, whether it's evil passions, evil desires... Or like in our gospel lesson, greed. Greed. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon those who are disobedient. These are the ways you once lived. But you've been redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You have been redeemed.
Start acting like it. That's what the apostle, that's what the epistle lesson is saying. Start acting like it. And then when people say and see how your life is changed, they will wonder how this great miracle has come about. And through your life, through your ministry, your obedience to Jesus, we can feed the world, we can clothe the naked, we can proclaim salvation to everyone in need. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and blessed Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. Let us not be jealous over the gifts that others have. We cannot wear their armor. We cannot stand in their faith. We stand in faith in you. It is ours. Lord, rise us from death and dark thinking. We are yours called by your name. Rise us up in this faith and in this hope and keep us near to your cross for it is from thence our salvation comes. And all God's children said, Amen. In your hymnals on page 301, if We're ready. Yes, we are ready. 301. Jesus, keep me near the cross.
In the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelations, John was writing and he said, the Lord is coming back and he is coming to judge the world and there will be plagues and famines and great portraits in the sky and everyone will be judged. In the last book of Revelations, John, who was a friend of Jesus, who knew Jesus as a friend as well as the lawgiver, the judge. John wrote, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will will be be done. done on earth as as it is is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 